I recently did a video covering various single sign-on options available in Dundas BI, and one of them was, of course, federated authentication. And I thought that this subject could use a deeper dive. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what is federated authentication, and then we'll go and set it up using Dundas BI. And speaking of setup, the postal service jokes are actually very easy to set up. It's all about delivery. Oh, and I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. So really quick, what is federated authentication? Federated authentication enables users to log on, in this case with Dundas BI, by authenticating to some third-party identity provider. For example, instead of the standard login screen, users may be redirected to Google's login screen, where they would authenticate you know, using their relevant credentials, and then they'd be passed back to Dundas BI with information about the user. You've seen this before in other applications, and there's no way you've avoided it. Have you ever tried to sign on to Spotify? Let's try it. You can see right here that the login page, you're being offered federated authentication through the ability to log in with Facebook, Apple, or Google. And then, of course, a local account. Dundas BI is the same thing. This use of third-party security in Spotify is federated authentication. Now, some people have a misconception when they try to log into the application using something like their Facebook account, that it's simply going out and grabbing your password from these services. That's not the case, and it's a little bit more involved than that. Passwords are never really being passed around, and really this is how it works. We have four actors here. You've got the application. In our case, this is Dundas BI. And we have the API, which will be used for authentication. This is going, in my case, to Google. Google has an authentication server where no information about the user is stored and it's, and it's separate from the resource server where your information lives. When you go to Dundas BI to perform the login, Dundas BI will make a request to this authorization server. So once this is triggered, Google will display an authorization screen where your users can authorize Dundas BI using your Google service. Now in this case, this person is trying to log in to Dundas BI and will be redirected to the Google Authentication Server. There they can perform the login and are basically granting Dundas BI access to their account. Upon doing this, an authorization code is sent back to Dundas BI, which can use this account. Dundas BI is gonna take this authorization code and use it to request what's called an access token to the Authentication Server. This token is just another little piece of code that is gonna allow the system to have access. Think of it like a key. If you have the key, you can get in. Now, after requesting access to the resource server with the access token, then server resources will be available to Dundas BI. Now, you don't really need to know all of this. It, it's actually pretty straightforward uh, once you actually see the setup, but this is roughly how it's gonna work. So to set this up, First, we add the settings to what we call the Federation Manifest. In the case of Google, these settings are going to look like this, and you can add them to Dundas BI using the config options under Setup. Just look for the advanced settings called the Federation Manifest. This tells the system things like how you want to allow users to be created, and specifically, do you want to allow everybody in using a Google account and have them automatically create an account, or is it closed and provided by Google? These options are available in this manifest. And of course, depending on the provider you're using, this will be a little bit different from provider to provider. Now, specifically with Google, you need to get a client secret code and a client ID, and you need to put that into the manifest. This is provided through the Google API Manager. Now, once you have all this information, it really is just a matter of putting it into the manifest to tell Dundas BI how to make that connection. By the way, you'll also have to enable, in this case, Google Plus API if you haven't already, and provide Google with specific information about the address of the Dundas authentication bridge so that it knows where to redirect users back after they've logged in with their Google credentials. But once you set this up, you can log out of the system and you can see a new option in the UI for Google authentication. And that's it. It's working and it's done, super easy. And now my users can get access to the system via Google or whatever other third party you want to use. The setup is pretty much the same for any federated authentication identity provider. So I hope this was helpful. 
And if you do want to learn a little bit more about subjects that are similar to this, I'd recommend checking out the video that we did on embedding. As I bet if you're looking at federated authentication, embedding is probably a next step. So the video is called How to Embed Dundas BI in a Third Party Web Page. Also, check out Export Embedding for a Better User Interface, as it's probably something that you'll want as well a seamless export within an application that you're building. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.